Hello and welcome to Pro Modelers. Um, this month's build, or one of this month's build, is going to be the Revel F15E Strike Eagle. We're going to be using the Ares um, resin aftermarket cockpit set and with the two bulbs decals. Quite a striking um, pattern this one's going to be in. It's going to be in the Tiger Meat of the Americas 2005. Okay, um, here we have the cockpit section. The tub is all put together. Now, um, this full build using this Aries cockpit set is available in the, um, I think it's the intermediate video area. Um, shows all the painting, exactly how we got to that stage. So if you're wondering how it's all going, that's how to do it. Okay, for the moment, what I've actually done, to bring you up here, all I've done is the uh, intakes, the tubes here. I've put them together, banded them up, and then with uh, the extra thin glue, I've let it run down. Now I'm gonna give it a couple of coats in there. And what it will actually do, um, if I bring you in a second here, it'll weld up that inside actual area so you don't get a seam line in. If you give it two or three coats over a few hours, that'll take care of that. The other thing that I've also done is opened up the holes on the lower part of the fuselage. Obviously, you know, always want to forget those, so I've done that already. Now, if you're going straightforward with the build of the cockpit, it all goes very easy together. You build the bottom half of the wheel wells, which go to the tub, and then it just simply fits inside just like that. Obviously with us, we're gonna be doing it with the Aries cockpit. So what you need to do is actually remove all this inner detail just in here, like so, as I've done in this one. Now the thing is that you're going to have to do um, the normally the wheel well for the front main uh, for the front gear actually is attached to the bottom of the actual seats itself the tub. Um, what I've actually done is just glued them all up and then put it together. Now another little thing I've done, if we just bring you in here a second, um, another thing I've done is is that this back one here the door is all part of it it's in I've gently with a craft knife just cut it away so then we don't have to worry about obviously the door taking a hit at anywhere sort of soon um, and knocking it off so I've taken that off and obviously what we're going to do is do the gear different now the front half hasn't got the actual part of the wheel well on it because it's actually on this part of the actual tub itself it's this front part here because normally we would all fit in sort of like this um, the front part of the door on the F15 is closed all the time anyway, so you're not going to see it. So I haven't worried about putting that very front part on. If you wanted to, of course, you could just cut this part off and pop it in. Now, with the Aries cockpit, what you need to do, um, there's a, a, the actual plug mark, is sand that completely down. Um, I did mine with a, with a razor saw um, and then a little bit of sanding just after it. But basically, so it will fit in. Now, you should find then, obviously by taking off this top part of the HUD, uh, the actual the front cover uh, for the instrument panel, if you cut it away like this, so you're left with this one, and take out the inner detail, you should find it's quite a good fit. And literally, obviously this front edge here fits underneath and makes a very nice snug fit just like that. And obviously we've got the room then for the wheel well that fits in just underneath. But it's actually a straightforward standard fit. Um, you might have seen me do the one, um, there's the photo tutorial on there with a Phantom. Uh, that cockpit was a lot of work to get in. This one, very straightforward, popped in a dream, no problems anywhere. So that's pretty straightforward on that part. So what we're going to do, we'll remove this other part here. All we're going to do is sand it off with a quite a a coarse file just like this and we're going to get in here just like this and sand that all the way. Um, the insides out and obviously we've taken out the HUD and then this is where it's going to come um, just to trial fitting seeing how it goes trial fitting seeing how it goes. With most resin placement cockpits um, the side walls are normally too thick it's just a thing of getting all that detail in. But if you actually um, hold it up to the light and sand, you can tell when you're getting close to being, um, as, as if you're gonna go through. But you're gonna need to sand these side walls off, sand the bottom, taper in the insides. And also what I did here, I took a slight bit off this top corner there, brought off this edge to make it fit better. So now we can keep test fitting 
and I know I'm almost there on this one but basically we pop it in pop one side in make sure it all fits and then we'll pop so we're looking like this and then we'll pop the other half on now it probably will take a little bit to get it all in there and a bit of squeezing and pushing and seeing how it's going to go but eventually you'll end up with something like that so we've actually got the cockpit in there now um, actually in the cockpit and then we've still got enough here to allow for the windscreen for it to be fitted okay um, you're going to need to use super glue to actually glue this in place now what I did to make sure we've got the same type of width and the bits and pieces like that I've just banded together and then you can actually test fit to see how it all is going to go in and if to make sure you've got the right widths and it all fits and everything okay just like that so if, when you're happy with it you can actually then super glue this in place or for the moment you could just glue the outer bit it's a strong enough fit that this isn't going to go anywhere um, and then afterwards you can start to pull in but as you can see by looking in certain angles like that there's not a lot of room there's not a lot of leeway to making these things fit it's a little bit better than the phantom we did but it's certainly still a tight fit so what we we'll do now is i'll get this front half all glued up and then we'll probably put a tiny bit of super glue just in the top bit just up here and then we can move on now i used a bit of super glue just in here you can see the whiting uh, for that top join there a little bit of super glue down in this bottom one here and in there and the rest of it is just done with the extra thin gone round the outside with it and then we've got rubber bands to hold it really all firmly in place there's three main key areas when you're doing the f15 firstly is the front section here um, and then the next problem is obviously we've got to make a good join so when it actually joins up to the rest of the kit in here to make that seamless this join in here and then the next problem after that is actually putting the wing tips on so they're not noticeable that join but there again hopefully um, I've done lots of times before without need to fill up I'm hoping this time it's not by using a little bit of weld action and rescribing we can get those done so that's that bit we're going to leave that now to completely go off for a bit before we rescribe and sand and then we can move on <coughs> to carrying on with the fuselage section Unmasked. All I've done is sanded using um, the sanding sticks and then gone over it with some sanding sponges and then I've just rescribed all those lines we had to worry about. It. Still got a little bit to do in here but we're all together now and we're all ready to move on to the next stage. Okay, change of cutting map, we're on to the dirty one. Now, um, painting the inside of uh, air ducts can be very, very tricky. One way that I tend to do it, I first will give it a spray. Um, just inside everywhere with some normal flat white um, paint we're using model air in this particular instance um, and let that dry but not fully dry just give it about sort of 10 minutes so the top is dry for like but underneath is still wet then all I do grab a bit of blue tack like so make it into a little flat bit stick one end on just like that, and then fold up the bottom so I, you're making it sort of paint tight so the paint can't get out, just like so. Then take in your paint from your bottle, squirt lots of it in. So if you can actually see that, but you're bunging loads in all around the edges and let it flow down and run all the way around. And when you're in there and it's reached the bottom, what you do is let it run back up until it's almost coming out and then rotate it 90 degrees and flood the bottom and say so keep rotating until it's all covered. Now your biggest problem in here will be air bubbles. So try and work them around and if you can get in there and pop them and let that stand up and if you take um, with these tops these are a dropper you can just pull them off so you just do that because we're not going to waste any of the paint and then all we do 
is tip all the excess that we've got left over back in for next time. So it takes a while to drip out and you want to get most of it out otherwise you're going to end up with pools of it in there. Now being acrylic it's going to dry quite quickly and you'll probably be good to go in sort of um, not long at all. Whereas if you were using enamel you'd literally have to wait days and days and days to get that to dry. Then all you'll simply do leave it like that for a few minutes and then rotate it to dry for a few minutes and then rotate it again for a few minutes and round again and keep rotating it every two or three minutes all the way around and then that way it will still stay nice and smooth without getting a really big pool in anywhere. Once you're all dry and you're all happy with it just let it stand up for another sort of half a day if you like, pull the bottoms off and you can carry on modelling. Okay, so we've got the air intakes installed, if you can see them in there, nice and glossy. It might have some covers on this one yet, but obviously we've done it that way. By dipping it, you'll get rid of that centre seam that runs all the way through there. Um, as I say, it may do one dip, it may take ten. A personal choice, just build them up, and afterwards, if you want them to give that nice glossy look, you could always run a clear gloss in there as well, and that will take care of that. But we've got those in now. Um, I've just stuck them in place, so the next thing to do we'll be putting the top half on, remembering that we've opened up the holes. So we'll get this top half on. Okay, when we've got it obviously together like this, I'm just gonna show you a couple of points to point out. Now, if I get something to point with, I use this paintbrush. Right, when you're gonna be joining your two halves um, together, if we just get this here, like this, in here, just underneath this bottom bit, there's a tiny little bit of flash in there. There's a tiny little bit here, okay, and then here, and the same across. Now the thing is, on all the ones I've built with these, if you take those little bits out, it makes the dream fit for this front part coming in. If you don't, you end up with lots of little problems. So just take your sanding stick, and give it a rub, same with the other side, just like that, same with leaving it in here, and on this one. And then when you come to test fit, in here, you should get a, a, a lot better fit. Now, two ways of actually putting this together. Ideally, we would let this back part dry, but obviously for the, the purpose of showing you here, what I'm going to do is, if you marry up the top half as best you can, sit that, let it dry. Once it's gone dry, you can work the bottom half or you can do it the other way. You can start on the bottom half and work your way to the top. Personally, I would have thought it would have been better to do it the other way because obviously this lower one, nobody's going to see that quite as much as they are the top one. But it's quite a good joint anyway. So if we just run through this top one, I'm going to use the slower setting super glue just to help along here. So we'll give it a bit up there and just run some down both sides like this for the moment. So we are fitting the underside in and we're going to line up and hold. Then once we're in a good position and we're happy with the join, we're going to give it a squirt with some kicker make sure we're all happy how it's sitting Let's give it a blow now continue to hold that for a few moments because obviously it's under pressure and unless it really gets in there and dries all the way through as soon as you take your hand away it's actually going to crack so it may look like i'm not moving but look we are it's still rolling it's just you need to hold it here for a few moments just to get it all into position now, I'm not saying that's going to be a perfect fit, but it'd be a lot better than it would be if you had glue all over it and you had to go round and redo it all. Okay, so if we release now, um, how well you can actually see in here, but it's not a bad fit. And obviously, 
the underside we've still got a bit of a gap going on there but we can take care of that afterwards we just needed this top one here and on the other side to be a nice join and that is quite a nice join quite a nice fit minimal sanding now to take care of that and then we can work about this one underneath here so what you could do i would personally now seal that up with some glue the top half and then we'll work on the bottom but just for the moment now we should be able to just pull this together just like that and it closes that gap up lovely um what i'm going to do i'm just going to put a drop of the super glue in this back normally with a cocktail stick but we'll use here and all we'll do is just rub get rid of that super glue okay in with your kicker just like that okay push together and hold because you've squirted it with a kicker beforehand hopefully then it will dry now this is where you could do with another set of hands once you've got it pushed together wipe off that excess that we've got there and we're with a cotton um, bud or with a bit of tissue give it another squirt with kicker the thing is with the kicker it will make the super glue more fluid just before it sets and helps you out but that's where you could do with a, uh, another set of hands really so what I'm going to try and do I'll just give that a, a squirt and a bit of a rub and a blow this is the trouble with um, obviously when you get forward fuselages that join obviously Tomcats are the same F-16s the way the manufacturers tend to make them they all end up roughly being like this and it's quite an important join many times you'll see them and it's a great build and everything else and then there's a nasty join there if you can take care of joins like this um, and make them invisible um, and then it, it certainly improves your modeling overall just by looking at it and the other thing is as well is that if there's a panel line that that follows you can follow that panel line um, and hide the join even better so uh, if there's a join there you can do that if there's not we can just put a little bit of filler on which we will do with this one i'll do it to show you even if it's a good join i'll still do it um, and then you can blend it away you can just blend it into the rest of the fuselage and you'll be fine right i'm hoping that's in there now which it is obviously the rest of the model is still wet and drying but as you can see there now um, obviously you've got the black paint while well, i was just checking a seam line um, but it's in there now um, and obviously you've got the whiteness showing from the actual the super glue itself where it's dried but as you can see i'm um, just by feeling it it's a very good join there's no a massive gap or anything else need to deal with and this side if anything is a little even better um, so we can just now let that dry a bit we'll get some liquid poly once that's dry totally by extra thin like this and we're just going to run it in those gaps and what that'll do we'll just it'll get in amongst all that super glue that we put in there and it will take care of any little joins any little gaps going on anywhere and it'll weld them up it'll strengthen the join the other thing it will do is make certainly the, the gluing a lot easier so if you can see there um, but we've got it in here that's a nice join I'm really quite chuffed with that it's not a great deal same with the other side that's a good join and these lower ones so we're going to let that one go totally off and the rest of the fuselage go together and then we can get to our next big problem area which you'll see on a lot of f-15s is that the actual there's two parts to the wing section um, you have the underside here which is very simple and a very good join just goes up underneath just like that but the trouble being is then people come along with this top piece and they place it on and then you end up with an ugly seam line down in here now i'm hope i'm going to show you just why i really do like the tamiya extra thin um conjunction with a little bit of super glue because you can make that totally invisible and nobody will see it without any filling if you can avoid filler um although filler isn't your enemy um, by a long way it really does help improve your models if you can avoid it you should at all cost by spending a little bit of time dry fitting and getting that in there 
you know, in a nice clean, crisp way. Um, and the avoiding filler, that means you don't have to go around re-scribe, re-sand, various bits and pieces like that. So it's just all a, a bit of a help. I'm gonna let that dry for a few hours and then we'll get those wings on. Okay, so we've let this dry. I've got a tiny bit of sanding and filling to do on it, but apart from that, that front is a nice join. So next is putting the actual wings on and those wings tips we were talking about. Um, now the lower part is very straightforward. This is just gonna glue straight on. So we can just glue those straight in place. Um, it's a nice fit. If you're using the weld action, it'll take care of that seam in there and there's no other problem. Now, uh, on F15s, when they're powered down, the actual um, ailerons on the outside actually droop down. Both sides actually hang down quite a bit. Now, you might have seen me do this on other models, um, but what you actually do is you score each side and down. Now, I've done it on this one, so literally all we did on the inside just in here, along this area here. We just pulled you in a little bit. So we just score this here, and then cut, obviously cut straight down this outer one, and the same from the other side, and then we just ping it slightly. Now it's still attached, it isn't actually off, but it just hangs down and gives that power down look. So if I just show you what I did, all we do, using a steel ruler or something like that, then you can just place it down Okay, now follow the line, make a couple of passes, light passes, don't push down too heavy, because if you do make a, a slip, if you like, you'll end up, now the inside one is quite straightforward. We're just gonna cut a couple of passes, just like that. Okay, let's do these ones in here again. Just like that, and then the same on the actual outside. Although you could follow that panel line there, it's easier if you follow the, we use a steel ruler to cut against, just in case you slip. Gently pull it along, it's quite a soft plastic so you won't have to be hacking. Just like that. Same with the outside. Outer edge. Okay, it's quite important to make sure you're right through that outer one. And then when you're happy with it, you should find that just a little bit of pressure will cut that down. Make a couple more passes just along here. Should find. There we go. It just cuts down, and away you go, just like that. It's quite a straightforward, easy one to do. There we go. Same on that one as well. And then that way we can glue them on. But for the moment, we'll get these parts actually on here, and get the underside wings on them, and get those wing tips. Okay. On. So the next big thing and the last problem area on the kit itself is these wing tips. Now, I've done these various times in the past. The first time I did it, I ended up having to use filler. Um, didn't particularly like it. If you put them on now, you get quite a nasty uh, gap. Let me just bring you in a minute. You get quite a nasty gap in here, and it's quite hard to do. Now, if you sand off, the main reason, sorry, getting ahead of myself here. The main reason you get it is that these inner under parts are slightly too long. If you can sand them off, you'll get a far better joint. So all I do is sand off this edge. And then you'll still get a good fit underneath, but obviously on top, see we've got a few passes and it's already better. So continue to sand and test fit. The way I do it, if you count sort of, you know, seven or eight passes and then try it again, and you can keep, keep passes and then until, see we're almost there now, um, the fit is almost invisible. 
then what you want to do when you put it together, you don't want to squeeze this middle section with any clamps or anything because actually you'll make the gap even bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few little more passes just down the back flap, uh, the volcano on here because we're going to have it dropped. It's going to need a little bit of movement. Just like that. And as we can see, we're, I'm very happy with that joint. It's hardly noticeable. Um, and it's level as well, which is the main thing. So obviously when you're checking your joint, not only is it going to be fit, it's got to be on the right height. If it's slightly too high for any reason, then literally come back with your, your file and just take care of that under side. Remember counting the amount of passes you do until you've got a nice fit that you're happy with. Then when you're happy with it, the way I do it, you get your extra thin as we use okay and then let it run around these back edges in here a couple of loaded up if you like flood the actual area so it's more sticky than it is anything else pop that on and let that underside area under there dry first before we move on and take care of that inner joint so if you like we've got this one here and then we'll just run some extra thin in that joint just like that and let that weld up like so as I say let it all weld up don't worry about the leading edge for the moment or this gap here because it's a nice small joint you can hardly see it but what we can actually do is slightly by lifting the wing a little bit put the glue in let it dry for say one minute then release it and then it'll bend and you'll get a weld action which will take care of that joint. As you can see, it's a nice fit anyway, but otherwise I've seen a lot of people with this particular kit where they've sanded and you end up taking out this detail. Um, and it's quite a nice little uh, recessed detail there, but obviously you're never really gonna get it back. Um, so if you just let that one, is still drying off in there. And then all we'll do is, when we're happy that it's, it's in the right position and we're biting and everything else, we're just going to drop a little bit and we're going to let it flow. Sorry, bring you in. That's it. So there's our join we're talking about in here. And we're just going to fill it up, so to speak, with our liquid. Okay. Remembering all those areas just like so and as you can see now it's it's gone it's not noticeable at all so if you just let it go off slightly for the moment I'm resting the wing tip just slightly down just to give it a bit of a lift whilst it just starts to go off as soon as it's got a bit of bite and a bit of grip to it we can release it it will then self level itself you know obviously we don't want the wing tip bending up but it won't be because we're just at a sort of microscopic level you're not going to be able to see it unless we're going to be starting getting out the the measuring devices so we're just letting this go off for a few seconds as I say it you know within five minutes this stuff is good to sand so just letting it go off and there we go it's done so we've still got to do the leading edge and sand in but there we go, hope you can see that. That's a perfect join, no filler required. There's no gap, obviously it's still a little bit shiny there, you can see, but once we've got the, the primer over the top, you're not gonna be able to see that join at all. So it's a nice little way. Remember, we're just gonna take out this, in, this outer edge, just count the amount of passes you do. So say, do five, test fit, do five, test fit. Keep it flat to it, obviously. And then the other area, you may have to worry about is just in here um, there is two little small small tabs that you'll find on the inside test it first before you remove them then same thing a few passes test fit few passes test fit you know let's face it it's five minutes extra work doing it there but how many more minutes are you going to spend doing it with a filler rescribing trying to sort it out polishing it afterwards it's a lot easier to do it like this